talk about this div tag that I've been bringing up so much. So let's see what I have written here. The div tag acts as a container for other elements. It is often used to house groups of elements together. This way you can write styles and target them to specific content on the page. So these boxes that I've been bringing up, these boxes can be called the div. And the reason that we pack things together is so that when we write a single style for, let's say a div of, with a class of test, all the elements inside of that div name test are gonna be affected and any other divs, i.e. sections we have, will not be affected. That's how we start to get more specific with our web, with our website creation. Up here in the example, I can just show you the syntax real quick. There's a P tag as usual, right? We got an opening and a closing. Um, and it is the child of this parent div tag. And the div tag on its own doesn't do anything. It's just for structural reasons that we keep things in there. And right now, what's inside of our div, as you can see, the, the, the key difference here is that with the P tag, the word content is wrapped around our P. Um, but in the, in the div tag, we have these elements and you see there's a space here it's because effectively this whole thing is the div tag right and it doesn't matter what we put inside of it we can even put other divs with their own parent child relationships effectively creating a grandchild right so this p tag here is the grandchild of this parent div tag and this p tag and this div tag are siblings and i guess that would make this one the uncle but not much of a connection there so let's take a look at the code pen. What do we have here? If we click on result, you'll see that on the right hand, you're not really seeing that much. All you're seeing is plain text, but there are relationships being created on the left hand side via the div. So let's talk about this one right up here. We have our div tag, which is a child of the body tag. And the way we see it now, it's just a bunch of plain text inside of a div tag. It can also hold plain text like this. You see no difference on this side. See that on this one, it's a div tag with a P tag inside of it, just like the example showed. And it can even hold several elements, right? As we mentioned before, and not just one, but different uh, relationships therein, where we can even have a div with a P tag of its own inside of there. Really, all that I want you to do for this lesson is uh, take a look at just writing divs and putting p tags or, or h1 tags or other divs inside of them just to see the uh how we're starting to, to build everything out by kind of putting everything in its place in the next few lessons we're going to be practicing a lot with divs so just take a look at the syntax up here and then take a look at just the different types of structures that i've created down here now it's intentionally messy just so you could see that there's something missing here. If we're talking about making our website structural, why is it that all of these divs are just have plain text inside of them without elements wrapping around them, real elements like a P tag or an H1 tag? You wouldn't leave it like this. You wouldn't just leave text inside of a div unless you had some sort of reason you wanted to, and it does happen. But typically, we want to create sort of like a, almost in, in this way, where our elements are starting to to bend inside so that we can see not only the fact that our, our, our elements are have relationships to each other via parent-child relationships, but even visually, we can see that the more that we indent, the more that uh, the more elements are associated to a specific parent. And you'll see indentations go all the way down where you have kind of like a full triangle all the way down your structure. That is normal. But the important thing is having the presence of mind of knowing which elements you put in which divs and what you name them. All that becomes sort of second nature, but we're gonna start with very simple uh, relationships now. Just one parent element and maybe a grandchild all the way in. And we're gonna wrap a bunch of elements together, maybe have two main ones with a bunch of subsections. So just play around with this and I'll see you at the next lesson.